In this lesson, we'll briefly go over the idea of the discriminant. Okay, so in the previous lesson, we talked about the quadratic formula, uh, which I've written down right here. And what I've highlighted here, what I've made in bold, is actually called the discriminant. Okay, so what's under the square root is called as it's called the discriminant. It's b squared minus 4ac. And um, we have a symbol here, uh, that, like a triangle here, that represents the discriminant here. Now, there's three things that can happen with a discriminant. The discriminant could be less than zero, it could be negative, it could be equal to zero, or it can be greater than zero. Okay. So let's look at it. Now, what's the first thing we wrote here? If the discriminant is less than zero, if it's negative. Now, if the discriminant is less than zero, what happens to the quadratic formula? Think about it. You have negative b plus or minus the square root of, I don't know, let's say the discriminant is negative 16. So it would be plus or minus the square root of negative 16 all over 2a. So basically, if you think about it, if it's negative, you'll have two complex roots. And we did one of the examples in the, um, in the previous lesson uh, when we introduced a quadratic formula. Now, you could say two complex roots, or you can actually say no real roots, okay? That's also acceptable because um, in, in, in grade 10, we generally really just care about the real roots, okay? So if you see a discriminant, which is negative, you, you should really say to yourself, there are no real roots, okay? You won't get a real number as a solution to your equation. You can't sub in any number you can think of into the equation that will make left cycles right side, all right? Now, but I really want to emphasize there are two roots. There are two numbers that, that can satisfy the equation, it's except for the fact that they're just not real numbers. Um, okay, let's keep going. What if the discriminant is positive? What if it's greater than zero? Okay, we have two uh, real roots, but not only do you have two real roots, could it be plus or minus, and let's say, I don't know, it's, the discriminant is seven, if it's plus or minus root seven, then you're gonna get two values for x, which are two roots which are gonna be different from each other. Okay, so I'm not only gonna write two real roots, I'm gonna write two unique real roots. All right, you get two answers which are different from each other. Now lastly, uh, what about a discriminant of zero? If your discriminant is zero, you get two real roots but they are identical so very mis a big misconception when students see a discriminant of, of zero they they see they think that their solution has one real root uh, I know it's tempting to say there's one real root but you actually have two answers but it's just repeated so it looks like it's one answer, but it's really two answers, okay? Um, so, and it makes sense because if you're, uh, if you're discriminant zero, root zero is zero, so all you're left with is a solution of negative b over 2a. So in fact, you can make the argument, if your discriminant is zero, the solution to the equation is always negative b over 2a. And I really want to emphasize, if your discriminant is equal to zero, uh, there's only one way to achieve a discriminant of zero. Uh, there must be something special about A, B, and C. I don't want to give it away, but we'll do an example uh, below. Um, I know we didn't, we're not solving quadratic equations in this lesson, but I also want to refresh your memory. If the discriminant is a perfect square, that means you can solve, uh, solve the quadratic equation by factoring. Okay, so I digress. Uh, there's so many things I want to say about this. Uh, so I'm going to add one more little fact. Okay, this is this is gold. Um, when you solve a quadratic equation, it actually doesn't matter whether uh, your discriminant's positive, negative, or zero. You actually always have two real two roots. Okay, sorry, I'm going to say it one more time. You always have two roots. Okay, because if you look at all three scenarios, you have you have two roots. Okay, but if the discriminant is negative, you have to be very specific. If the discriminant is negative, you have two complex roots. And if your discriminant is positive, you have two unique real roots. 
And if the discriminant is zero, you have two roots, two real roots, but uh, the two roots that you see, the two real roots are, are the same. Um, so yeah, uh, that's actually in line with something that's very, very important. Uh, uh, it's, it's a big, big idea in algebra. So last year when you studied linear equations, okay, so I'll give you an example with a linear equation. A linear equation always has, always have one real root. Okay, so for this equation, x is equal to 7 over 3. A quadratic equation always has two roots. Now, be careful. Uh, I already talked about the roots being complex or real, but this idea is, this progresses. So in grade 9, linear equation, one root. Okay, I won't, I won't go into detail about real complex, but let's say one root. Degree one, one root. Degree two equation, two roots. Okay, two answers. Degree three, you guessed it, three answers. Degree four, four answers, okay? Now the answers might not be real numbers, but that, that's a big idea in algebra. So I go online and I see tons of people saying discriminant of zero has one root. I think they mean one, like, one unique number, but it's really two roots of the equation, okay? Anyways, because if that, that will really break a fundamental idea in algebra, to say that a quadratic equation has one answer, okay? It's a degree two equation, so it has to have two answers. Anyways, why are we interested in the discriminant? Uh, because it tells us uh, tells us the number of real uh, you know what it tells us the you know what? I'm gonna go I'm gonna go add some words here the nature of the roots whether it's real or complex. Um, you really want to study the discriminant sometimes because if it's like a war problem, you you want to make sure you're going to get real roots, you're going to get real solutions. Otherwise, you don't want to progress. You don't want to do all this work um, to realize, oh, it's a dud. You just wasted all that time. So sometimes um, you just want to check it out. You want to make sure you're going to get real solutions. Yeah, so... The discriminant really ultimately just gives us the nature of the roots. All right, so determine number of x-intercepts for each of the quadratic uh, relations here. So we have y equals 2x squared minus x minus 9. So I'm going to let y equal 0 because that's what you do to solve, uh, solve for x-intercepts. And then um, I'm not, I don't really care what the x-intercepts are. I want to see... Uh, how many there are. So I'm going to solve for discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac. So negative, oh, it's positive for sure. Uh, 9, uh, sorry, 8, 72, 73. So since the discriminant is greater than 0, who cares that it's 73? I know that there are two unique real roots to this equation. So I'm going to get two totally different x-intercepts. So two x-intercepts. All right, x squared plus 9. You know what? Just based on transformations, I can tell you right away that this parabola has no x-intercepts. But you know what? Let's check it out anyways. Let's see if what we learn about discriminant matches up with our idea uh, with, of transformations. Okay, Everything in math should check out. So b is actually 0. Okay, 0 squared minus 4ac. That's negative 36. So since discriminant is negative, no x-intercepts which you already knew because like x, y equals x squared plus 9, you should really know that graph. You should know that like the back of your hand. All right, this guy, let y equals 0. Uh, I really want you to focus on that trinomial and then hopefully you see something special. Because when I see that, when I see that trinomial, it's screaming at me. So hopefully it's screaming at you too. Discriminant zero. How did I know it's zero? 
because it's a perfect square trinomial. So whenever you have a perfect square trinomial, the discriminant is zero. All right, so if it's a perfect square trinomial, that means you have one x intercept, right? That makes perfect sense. Uh, and if you have a hard time here, I'll give you the perfect square trinomial. 2x minus 5 all squared. The x turns up is 5 over 2. All right, last one. That y equals 0. So negative two, 0 equals negative 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. Discriminant negative 5 squared minus 4ac. Oops. So that's going to be 8, 25, 33. So since discriminant is greater than 0, therefore 2 x intercepts. Okay, so we talked about discriminant and we have one more lesson to go solving uh, some, some word problems. We're finally ready.